Hi guys, welcome and thank you for attending today's webinar. My name is Donna Chow and I'm your host and moderator for today's class by eLotus, your leading provider of TCM continuing education. We have been hosting educational courses for over two decades and we are proud to be your trusted source for premium CU content with over 200 speakers, 700 courses and 3000 hours of continuing education. Today's webinar is from Theory to Clinic, Patient Analysis 2, presented by Dr. Potion Lin. So the goal of this class is to make it feel like you are shadowing a teacher right next to them in the clinic, watching how they see patients and asking questions. We do this by using a telemedicine model that lets us see each other from a distance. You'll get the opportunity to see how Dr. Lin thinks strategic strategically as he gives a diagnosis and treatment plan remotely so that you can be able to do this from, for your own practice. Before he analyzes the case, we will provide the main complaint, a brief case history, and some background about the patient. Then he's going to ask some questions to help him understand the patient's symptoms better. Following the case analysis and prescribed treatment plan of herbs and acupuncture points, you, as a participant, may ask questions about the diagnosis, etiology, and rationale for herb selection. This is a golden opportunity to learn why certain herbs were ruled out for treatment and why certain prescriptions were made. So before we begin, I'd like to go over a few items to familiarize you with our webinars and how they work. Today's webinar will be from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. 11 a.m. Pacific time, and we're gonna have one break. The first half of the patient examination and questions. The first half will be the patient examination and questions, and then the second half will be the formula and point discussion. To use the webinar chat room, set your chat preference to everyone so that everyone, everyone can see what you're typing and be part of the conversation. And if you have any questions for Dr. Lin, please let's keep it organized and just type your question directly into the Q&A box. And finally, the quiz and the video replay, you guys will be notified by email tomorrow once they are available. So our speaker today is Dr. Po Xin Lin, who earned a doctorate of medicine from China Medical University in Taiwan and worked as an associate professor in the Department of Traditional Chinese Medicine after completing a bachelor's degree at the same institution. He's taught for 12 years at this university and has been in private practice for over 20 years, specializing in difficult to treat conditions. He is one of the most knowledgeable and most patient speaker we have today. So let's Go ahead and begin today's class and welcome Dr. Lin. Dr. Lin? Hi, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Can everybody type in the chat room to see if you can see Dr. Lin and hear him fine? Oh, okay. Yeah, I can I can see the image. Yes. So everybody can hear me. Yes. They put in okay. the chat room. Yes. So. Oh, okay. Good. Audio, both are good. And mm -hmm. today we have Diego here. He is our second um second patient for the English class. And Dr. Dr. Lane was saying yesterday, oh, the case is getting more complicated and complicated. So. <laughs> I'm sure Dr. Lin is able to help you. He's been practi in practice for okay. 30 years, and he's excellent at this. Um, the only only difficulty is he's in New York, so some things that I'm just going to have to help him, you know, transfer okay. the information. But Perfect. So let's get started, okay? So Dr. Lin, can you start with your question? Okay, okay. Um, okay, uh, Diego, host, yes. and uh, everybody, uh, how are you? Uh, I'm very happy to hear again. And um, today, um, we will um, collect Diego's information and uh, analyze them. And uh, uh, this is um, first part. We will do this. And the second part, we will um, discuss and analyze all the information and um, make the diagnosis and um, give Diego uh, the prescription. Okay, so uh, I hope today's course I can do my best and uh, uh, give Diego a suitable pr uh, prescription and give all uh, guys uh, um, um, good information to help you to learn about this. Okay, so uh, let's start it. 
Um, okay, um, before today's course, um, I read um, Diego simply um, past the history and uh, um, some health information. So I'd like to know, um, first, uh, can you describe about your um, your your uh, problem about the uh, fibromyalgia? Yes, I I have started about four years ago with a generalized pain. Uh, it started out with my um, uh, joints. Uh, it turned out to be uh, several kinds of arthritis, but that wasn't the only problem. Uh, it also included a lot of pain of my muscles and different organs, actually. Um, it ne It's never the same. It always travels, it always changes. That complicated also with the uh, high blood pressure, cholesterol, and um, I have a heart condition since I was a kid. So at any one time, I am dealing with uh, different kinds of conditions, ranging from joint pain to muscle pain to uh, low oxygen level, probably due to my heart condition. So it is a kind of a complicated situation. Sometimes I don't even know where the pain is coming from. Okay, good. So um, you just mentioned about four years ago, uh, you have a problem about uh, fibromyalgia. Um, how about arthritis? Is it the same time you got uh, another problem as well? Yes, I would say uh, I was aware of the arthritis about the same time when my uh, wrists and fingers and left hip uh, started hurting. It was uh, diagnosed with uh, uh, osteoarthritis for for the hip and and uh, different kinds of arthritis for my for my hands and shoulders. I also have a um, uh, tendonitis and 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 uh, carpal tunnel syndrome in both arms. Okay. So about the arthritis, does LEM uh, happen symmetry? I mean, bilateral hand, the bilateral side? Yes, both hands and now both shoulders. It was only my right shoulder, but now my left shoulder is hurting a lot. Um, other than the hands, also the wrists. Okay, so uh, about the arthritis, do you also have the morning stiffness when you wake up in the morning? Yes, um, it's always the morning is always the most difficult time of the of the day. Uh, it loosens up a little bit as the morning goes on, but it never goes away completely. Um, mm -hmm. During the night, it's particularly painful when I get a lot of numbness of the arms, and um, but, and the stiffness is usually there all the time. Okay, so. Um how about the, the temperature change? Is the temperature make the, the symptom uh, severe uh, when the temperature decreases? My temperature? My body temperature? No, 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 the surrounding temperature. Oh, I see. The weather. Um, I would say that during the cold, cold time, cold weather, it's a little worse. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But since I have other conditions, the heat also makes me uncomfortable. But regarding the arthritis, probably the, the cold weather is, is not so good for me. Okay, good. So uh, does you, uh, did, did your doctor uh, tell you about the arthritis is just degenerative or rheumatitis arthritis or any kind of this? Degenerative arthritis, yes, he talked about that. He talked about um, um, osteoarthritis and also rheum um, rheumatitis. Yeah. Yes. So he said it would it would not go away. It would just try to stop the progress of it. But mm -hmm. um, I haven't had that much success yet. Okay. So uh, about the rheumatoid arthritis, uh, at least the doctor will make sure by a blood test to make sure the RA factor to to make sure is the factor, the, the number, the data is higher or not. Because uh, if the RA factor is higher, um, there's one evidence for the, um, the diagnosis of the rheumatoid arthritis. 
So uh, if you have not do the blood test, um, just you know, just feel pain and the joint happened symmetry, uh, morning stiffness, and uh, when the temperature low drop, uh, makes your symptom worse. Okay, um, maybe it's it's a stronger evidence. Uh, there they are stronger evidence to support. Maybe it's the rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, and the chronic, I mean, uh, degenerative arthritis. Uh, most of the time, uh, maybe it's not happen symmetry, or um, the joint will swell, uh, will um, swelling as well when you feel pain. Okay, so I just like to make sure your arthritis is degenerative or rheumatoid arthritis. So, mm -hmm. do do you do you uh, do? Uh, I mean, are you sure uh, what kind of arthritis you you have? I've had a blood tests uh, many many times. Um, pretty much every couple months. Sometimes every month, depending on how how severe my pain is. So, yeah, the diagnosis is there. Um, when you say degenerative or rheumatoid, I've heard the word rheumatoid several times from the okay. doctor. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure about that. Okay, got it. So um, let's back to the fibromyalgia. Um, I mean, the, 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 the part of your body, um, is there any special part always happen frequently about the muscle pain? Oh, the muscle pain is usually stronger in my legs and my arms. Mm -hmm. Also in my chest. Because I have a heart condition, it was, it's been kind of hard for me to know if it's my heart or if it's my muscles. I've been doing, I've been, uh, looking at my, uh, cardiologist later, uh, late, lately, and um, he said that it's, pro it's probably related to my fibromyalgia. So I would include mm -hmm. my chest pain muscle mm -hmm. to that also. Okay. So um, can you also describe your um, heart-related issue? Yeah, I was born with a uh, heart condition that was corrected in 1967. It's an atrium septal defect that was corrected uh, in 67. And I had no problem up until about 12 years ago when I had a heart attack. Uh, at that time, I was, it was a, a stent was placed in my heart and um, it's been fine, but the doctor feels that I need another stent. That's another artery that is blocked. So I'm scheduled for that in the next uh, month or so. So before two years ago, uh, even you have a, a heart problem uh, when you grow up, but there's no any symptom just before, I mean, two years ago. No, 12, 12 years ago. Uh, 12 years ago. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, you also mentioned that you have some issue about your um, about uh, um, high blood pressure and high cholesterol. So uh, can you describe the process or, or, or the history about these two problems? My high blood pressure started, uh, at least I, w I noticed this when my heart attack happened. Right after that, I've been in, t in medication for that problem uh, for the last 12 years. Um, the, my high cholesterol probably has been there most of my life, um, maybe the last 20 years. I also mm -hmm. noticed that ever since I had my heart attack. So mm -hmm. also I'm taking medication for that. Okay. So it sounds like um, because your um, heart attack, so at that time you start uh, pay attention on your heart. Uh, I mean the blood pressure and the cholesterol, right? Yes, I would say so. And uh, and they also got problems. So you take the medicine from um, twenty years ago about these two problems. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, can you uh, can you talk about um, I like uh, I would like to know um, 
your your blood pressure and your cholesterol um so far uh does uh do they under control? Yes, it is pretty much under control while I'm taking my medication. Um, I noticed uh, about two years ago when I was having a lot of joint pain, and because I knew that what that might be a side effect of my cholesterol medication, I stopped for a few a couple months and my cholesterol went up, so I went back on it. Uh, so okay. Yeah, uh, I, I've been I've been taking that, and while I'm taking it, I'm okay. But but when you uh, take the medicine back, you start taking the cholesterol medicine again. Uh, how about your leg problem? Does that happen again as well? The leg? Yeah, you just mentioned uh, after you take the cholesterol medicine, you got some problem about your low extremity, right? Oh, I see. Yeah. No, what I'm saying is. Um, I knew that the, the cholesterol medication might be causing a side effect of a uh, joint pain, so oh, joint that's pain. why yeah. I started. But, oh, okay. Uh, you know, I didn't know that the, my arthritis was there also, so I just went back on the medication. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, about your arthritis and the fibromyalgia, uh, do you take any medicine um, for them? I take Arava for the arthritis, and I take uh, Lyrica for the fibromyalgia. I was also prescribed an Embro injections for my arthritis, but I haven't started on that yet. I um, frankly, I am afraid to take it because I have heard that it's very strong and there is a possible kidney damage with that. So I'm hesitant to take the embryo. I haven't taken it yet. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think the kidney kidney issue is another thing. We will talk about that later um, because you have a, also have a anemia, right? So I was also told I have anemia but mm -hmm. I haven't seen the the specialist for that yet. Okay, so uh, did, do you remember the blood test? Uh, how about the data of your your um, red blood cell or hemoglobin? It was low. Both okay. low. I don't remember the numbers, but I know okay. low. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, away from the borderline too much? I would say not too, not too much. Uh, okay. I talked to a friend doctor to have a second opinion, and he said mm -hmm. that it's not very low, although it's okay. lower than the limit, but it's not okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm concerned about your anemia because uh, when people have a heart issue, at the same time, if people uh, uh, have, have an anemia problem, uh, there's a possibility to affect your renal function. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so I suggest you at the same time, uh, you need to pay attention on your uh, renal function. You can, you know, just follow up regularly, maybe every three or every six months to, you know, check your renal function one time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, okay, let's talk about, how about your blood sugar? Do you know about that? My blood sugar is fine. Yeah. Oh, okay, one good. Things, one of the few things that are okay. Okay, good, good. Okay. So, um, okay. So, um, I know uh, you got a COVID infected uh, in, uh, about uh, uh, June, June, right? Yes. Uh, uh, the first week of June, I got infected mm -hmm. with COVID. It was pretty severe, I would say. I wasn't aware of how how low oxygen level could get, but mm -hmm. one night my oxygen level was in 80. Okay. I did not go to the hospital, and uh, luckily the last Monday, the next um, morning, mm -hmm. the blood, the sugar, the oxygen level was uh, close to normal. So, but it lasted a couple of weeks, and I still feel some of the symptoms. So did you check your um, oxygen level recently? 
Yeah, it's been about 92, 93. And um, for an exceptional day when uh, Donna did some acupuncture on me and the level went to 97. It was very okay. amazing. Okay, good, good. Yeah, uh, I think um, the best thing is if you can um, elevate your uh, oxygen level continuously to, you know, over uh, 95. I think that will be good, okay. But I, I'm sure acupuncture acupuncture is uh, is very beneficial for your uh, uh, oxygen level increase. Yeah. So uh, I know you you still have some you know pulmonary function uh, disability, just like um you have coughing, you have uh, congestion, right? Yes, I constantly have a congestion. The lung doctor told me that I have some scarring in some in my left lung, mm -hmm. and that he he thought it was related to the COVID infection. Okay. He he would see this in some of the patients. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, in addition to the lung congestion from the check, maybe from X-ray, I'm not sure, uh, and uh, you still have the coughing. So, uh. Yes. Let's let's talk about the coughing. Uh, do you still cough recently? I am taking uh, regularly a decongestion, and if I let go of the de decongestion, my cough and my congestion comes back right away. Um, okay. So yeah, I need to do that almost all the time. Okay. So actually, about the uh, you know the rest respiratory function, about your pulmonary, about your lung. Now seems just like uh, you still need elevate your oxygen level, but the other symptom has gone, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. Let's talk about your um, daily habit, okay? Um, actually, about the fibromyalgia, most people have this problem, also have a sleep problem or maybe they always feel anxiety or nervous, or maybe in the high stress work, or uh, no matter any reason, just in the stressful condition. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to know, um, how about your sleep? It's not good. I sleep maybe about five hours. Um, mm -hmm. I find uh, my pain difficult at night, so okay. it wakes me up. Also, my numbness of my arms wakes me up uh, very often. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you no, know, for the last maybe five or six years, it's hard for me to sleep uh, overnight. So I get sleepy during the midday. I take a nap sometimes, but it's not the same. I feel mm -hmm. tired. Okay, so um, about the pain or numbness, uh, they, uh, the, the symptom become uh, worse uh, when you fall asleep at night. I mean, if you compare with the daily time. Yes, uh, I think it has to do with, with my posture to my neck. Uh, I notice that in certain positions when I'm sleeping or when I'm laying down, or even sitting down, uh, my arms get numb. Mm -hmm. So when I move around, I change positions, I that gets better, but not totally better. It's only for uh, uh, some short time. Okay, good. So you just mentioned a very important information. If you, um, I mean, maybe move, move by yourself, do some exercise, uh, your your uh, muscle pain will be better, right? Yes. Um, it is a kind of a catch-22 thing. If I don't move, my pain gets worse. Mm -hmm. So I need to get moving even if it hurts because if I don't, it gets worse. So I try to yeah. balance both things. Yeah, got it. So how about your um, um, arthritis, your joint pain? Is it the same condition? When you move, after the movement, you'll be better? Yes. I, okay. I do exercise with my hands and stretching exercise that I uh, learned from my therapist. 
and I try to keep uh, my joints flexible, but it's um, it's difficult sometimes, especially in my hands. Okay. So okay, so you mentioned actually you just only uh, your 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 uh, quantity of sleep just uh, about five hours every night, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, can you tell me uh, what time you go to bed? At night. Well, I, I go to bed maybe about 10, but I don't go to sleep until mm -hmm. 1, maybe. Uh, okay. Because you cannot fall asleep easily? I can't. I just, I don't feel, I feel tired, but I, I don't want to go to sleep because that usually makes my pain a little worse or my numbness worse. So I kind of, Keep moving around to keep it controlled, so I don't go to sleep. <laughs> okay, okay, sense. got it. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> okay, so actually, you really feel tired, yeah. but it 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 is it's not uh you, you cannot fall asleep because of not, uh, because of not um I mean it's not uh, because your brain still running, no, but because of uh you feel you know you feel body or your muscle your joint pain. You need to make a move and make sure it becomes uh, better, right? Yeah, usually by, by the time I'm so tired, I fall asleep. But um, I keep myself awake sometimes to try to control the pain or control. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, can I know uh, what do you do now? I am retired. Uh, as of last year, I took an early retirement from the school district, but I was a school bus driver for many, many years. Mm -hmm. I had uh, special education students that I had to deal with uh, wheelchairs and stretchers and special equipment. So it was kind of a physically and mentally challenging sometimes. So mm -hmm. when I had the opportunity to retire, I just took it. Okay. So now uh, you have retired. So um, I mean, I like to know further. Um, what do you do in your daily life now? Just fight with your pen, or <laughs> do you do, do anything? I uh, try to help at home. Uh, take care of the grandkids. My wife and I are very much involved with my our grandkids. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, to tell you the truth, there's a lot of things I used to do I don't do anymore, like work in the backyard or do all the repairs in the house. It's just hard for me to climb stairs or yeah. or lift heavy stuff because mm -hmm. I also have a, a balance issue. I've oh, okay. a few times and and I try not to do too much. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... um. If you do some, you know, homework, maybe repair something, or maybe you manage something. Um, after that, maybe you do more uh, movement, right? So uh, after that, if you uh, uh, can, you uh, feel better uh, about your muscle or joint. If my activity is measured, I think it helps. Mm -hmm. But if I go over that, like, uh, for example, the other day I was trying to trim my tree using, you know, long mm -hmm. long tools. Yeah. That was really bad idea because at night the pain was so bad, my arms were shaking and all that. So it's kind of hard to reach a balance. So to keep active but not go over the, the limit. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. So um, another quick question about your joint affected by arthritis. How about their range of motion when you move them? I've been having a lot of trouble with my shoulders, uh, you know, mm -hmm. reaching back, lifting my arms too high. Um, with my lower back bending or, you know, raising my legs to, to certain angles, and with my hands uh, reaching and grasping hard, so I, like uh, heavy, like something heavy, 
I try not to pick up anymore because sometimes my fingers will just give out and I let go. So I would say the range of motion is limited in some ways. Okay. So it sounds like um, your shoulder range of motion uh, uh, is limited because of height. But yeah, usually it's on my, on my right shoulder is to go h higher than this, it's hard for me. Or to reach okay. back, you know, to reach back with my right shoulder. And now mm -hmm. I am feeling the same with my left, uh, about the same. It's now actually my wrist and my sh left shoulder are giving me a lot of trouble. Okay. The last couple of weeks. So, so uh, about your shoulder, maybe uh, including elbow, um, maybe it's tight. But you, you, you just mentioned um, when you take a heavy thing, your finger um, seems like weakness. You, you will drop something, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So do you also uh, search help uh, for uh, maybe not only physical therapist, but also um, acupuncturist or chiropractor to, I mean, relax the muscle group around the problem joints? Very little. Only lately I have mm -hmm. uh, tried to move away from traditional medicine to go into acupuncture or ch chiropractic. Okay. Many, many years ago, I had an opportunity to to do some chiropractic sessions for my lower back, and that helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Also, acupuncture helped me for balance uh, my ear. I had an ear problem and that helped me a lot. So mm -hmm. I'm really seeking different options now because all the pills and the medications I'm taking, um, frankly, I'm tired and it's making me have all the problems. So yeah. acupuncture, probably a good, uh, a good choice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm really sorry uh, for hearing about your treatment process. And um, but it's a but that is a that is a, a evidence to prove. Uh, maybe most of the medicine you have taken is not really focused on the the problem is where the problem is. Mm -hmm. So maybe sometimes it can just re um, I mean decrease the, the the symptom or make you feel better just a little bit just a short short of time a while. Yes. Yes. So yeah. So I think um. Okay, so today I think I will try my best to to find a maybe maybe not con maybe not um conclude all the problem, but try to our be try my best to find the main problem. Okay, okay. so if we can uh, find the main problem and you just you know follow the, the the route to to deal with the main problem, I think you can maintain the health and uh, um, make make most of the symptom become better. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So let's back to the questions. Let me check. Okay. So actually, uh, it sounds like your um heart related issue, uh, maybe uh high blood pressure, maybe high cholesterol, they are under control because of you take the medicine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, your blood sugar is okay. And about the uh, COVID infected issue now just only low oxygen level. Mm -hmm. So let me let me make sure another thing. Um, back to the sleep. Do you have many dreams? You know that's funny you mentioned that because uh, I was talking to my wife this morning. I was telling her that for the last month I've been having dreams every night. Actually, I, I understand that we dream all the time, but we don't remember about it. But now I, I've been noticing this and remembering the, the, the dreams for the last maybe month or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, in addition to dreams, um, do you also notice your memory or your focus uh, seems drop than before? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay. 
Hold on, let me take a note. Okay, so um, so do you still take exercise regularly? Not only just you know warm up or move your joint and muscle. You uh, do you still really take a really exercise? No, no. What I do is uh, walking. Mm -hmm. walk, okay. Uh, maybe three four times a week mm -hmm. around the neighborhood a little bit. But mm -hmm. I don't do any gym or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, about the walking, um, you know, the, the speed speed of the walking, just take a walk or you uh, walk in a fast speed? No. Uh, just a regular, normal okay. walk. Um, mm -hmm. We used to do the quick, fast uh, walking, but... I noticed that it hurts my heels and my 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 ankles, so mm -hmm. I stopped doing that. Just walking it is all I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So now, um, I think I need to to collect more information from your body. So I would like to ask the host to check your uh your tongue and your chest and your belly, okay? okay? Okay. Okay, thank you so much. So Tina, please. One more time, Okay. Okay, it looks to us live here with uh it's red with white coating. What do you mm -hmm. think? Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh the next one uh is the the eyelid color. Eyelid color, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. What's a little bit pale here? Yeah. So, uh, excuse me. Uh, I like to ask Diego. Um, put the 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 tongue out again and the turn up. I like to see the. At the bottom, thanks. Please turn up your tongue. Uh, yes. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, the bottom of the tongue, the, the sublingual veins don't look very purple. Looks actually okay. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Oh. The bottom of the tongue doesn't have a lot of uh, small veins either. Okay. Okay, so um, before Tina check uh, Diego's belly and uh, uh, chest, I like to ask the last one quick question. Uh, it's about the diet. So uh, do you take the meals regularly every day? I eat two meals a day, uh, breakfast and dinner. I usually don't take any lunch. Mm -mm, okay, so um, most of the time uh, you eat 
uh, uh, at home, right? Yes, most of the time. Maybe once a week we we eat out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe your wife cook uh, uh, from herself, right? I cook. Oh, you cook? Oh, good job. <laughs> well, my wife okay. also cooks, but I've been doing the cooking later. Lady, lady. Uh, okay, okay, good. So, uh, how about the, the the test, the flavor you did? Uh, do you like the heavy flavor or spicy thing or greasy food? Not spicy because my tongue is kind of delicate for that uh, uh, very spicy food. Mm -hmm. But I like uh, strong tastes. And I like fatty food, but I've been taking that out a lot lately. So um, I try to avoid the fatty food, but I like strong tasting food, yes. Okay, so so sometimes you still take that, right? Yes, I, I mean, I mean, yeah. use maybe more salt than I should. Should okay, or maybe I I use a lot of pepper, and oh okay uh, garlic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, do you like a sweet food? Yes, I do. Okay, so lack of sweet food. I like it, but I don't eat it as much anymore. I love cookies. Mm -hmm. I take a couple of cookies every day with mm -hmm. coffee. But okay, <laughs> not much. <laughs> okay, so how about fruit? Do you, do you eat a lot of fruit? I, I take fruit every day. Uh, uh, banana is my favorite, but um, we we have uh, papaya and um, strawberries, and I have a, a guava tree that I eat a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, I okay always every day I have some mm -hmm. kind of fruit. So okay, so you actually you you eat fruit many kinds and every day, right? Yeah. So so it sounds like so it sounds like um the quantity uh is 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 I mean I mean more, right? You eat more fruit. Yes, I eat more fruit. Yeah. Okay. And um, how about the milk? Do you also drink a lot of milk? No. Almost no. No milk. Um. I can't stand milk that much anymore. You know, it mm -hmm. makes me... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I like cheese, but not milk. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how about your poop? Uh, it's pretty regular. I every day? Take, um, fruit juice every morning, and that helps a lot. Um, I noticed that when I don't take my fruit juice, it becomes a problem, but it's pretty, pretty regular. Okay. So if you, if you take a prune juice, you can poop every day. But not if you prune, not... Not prune juice. Prune juice is too strong for me. Oh, okay. Other fruits. I oh, okay. Other types of fruit. Mm -hmm. So you take fruits, you can poop every day. Yeah, but if you, but if, if you eat less fruit, uh, how many days do you poop once? Still every day? Uh, I would say if I don't have my fruit... I can skip a day without not going to the restroom, but mm -hmm. um, it's very rare. I usually go every day. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is it a stool shape? Is like a sausage? Is is it, it's normal. It's not hard or it's not dark color. It's mm -hmm. but, but it's, yeah. Okay, it's good. It's formed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So how about pee? That's, uh, I feel I pee normally. I would say I get up to the restroom once during the night. At night, uh, it's okay. Clear. Mm -hmm. Um, pretty normal. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 also okay uh, in the daytime, right? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. So how about the color of the urine? Light yellow. Light yellow. Okay, good. So depending on what I eat, the color mm -hmm. might change, but yeah, it's most not of the time. Dark. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's it. So, uh, uh, can I ask Tina to check Diego's belly and chest? Okay. Can you lay down, Diego? Okay. Doesn't matter. Is this? Okay. 
So is this angle okay, Dr. Lin? Yes. Okay, so for those of you who are new, uh, Dr. Lin does the abdominal diagnosis on every patient. So what he basically taught us is you want to one look for the texture. So when you're first looking, you look at the texture of the skin, which then includes evaluation to see if there's any veins or discoloration or whatever. So from what we're seeing here, it looks okay, pretty even. And we just see like red dots here and there. And so the second T is we want to look for tension. So that's when you start palpating. And the third T is three T's, texture, tension, and then temperature. So you start here. He said that when you are palpating the patient, your hands must be warm too. Don't touch the belly of the patient when your hands are cold. So we start here where the stomach is. And his belly is actually hotter than my hand. So it's warm. All on the side, warm. This side is cooler over here. So temperature, and as I'm feeling the temperature, I'm also feeling the texture. The texture feels smooth, it doesn't feel dry. And then down here, from the umbilicus to the pubic bone. Okay, Dr. Lin, cold yes. here, cold okay. here, and cold here. So cold on the two sides of the umbilicus, mm -hmm. but down here is not cold. Up here okay. is not either. So okay. mostly here and here feel cold. Okay. So now we go in with pushing with a bit of pressure. So he says push gently and just feel the resistance, if you will. Mm. You know, all along under the ribs. Does it hurt here? A little bit, a little, a little bit, bit here. A little bit here, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And ask the patient if it hurts. And if it does, then see if there you feel any mass or anything. I don't feel any mass or tension. Both sides feel pretty even. Does it hurt on this side? No. Okay. Doesn't hurt on the right. I would say from here to here. From here hurts. to here, it hurts. Mm -hmm. It hurts here. So I'm okay, but by the right, by the right side, by the right side under the cage, the right side tension is is normal. If you compare with the left side, okay, hold this for me. This side feels, this side feels looser. So around here, it feels about the same. Mm -hmm. This side in general feels looser. This side mm -hmm. feels tighter. Right okay. Here. But Diego feel the looser side a uh, hurt, right? Yes, yes on this side. this side. Okay. This is when you had the surgery? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, did you have a poop this morning, Diego? Yes. Okay. Okay. So we're checking over here. It feels tighter down below here. So here it feels all okay. It doesn't feel like there's any tightness, and there's no rod feeling. Does it hurt over here? A little bit, yeah. A little bit over here too. Right there, yes. Okay. So uh Diego, can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Okay, uh do you like drink cold cold drinking? Or I like, uh, you know, uh, uh, test the ice cream or something like that? Ice cream? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so actually you you eat or drink the cold, the low temperature thing frequently, right? Yeah, I always uh, you have my drinks with ice all the time. Oh my God, that's too bad <laughs> to your problem. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. You need. I think you need to do some adjustment. Okay, after the check, I will tell you this. Okay. Okay. So, Doctor Lin, I'm sure our audience is curious. What did I do in the diagnosis here that made you mm -hmm. know that yeah. he likes to drink cold, cold drinks? Okay. So now, uh, after the palpation, uh, can I ask Tina to do the the precaution, the tapping for me? Oh.
Oh, more water. Solid? No, it's not so, It's not only solid. There's some liquid salt in there as well, right? Can you identify that? Yeah. Pretty solid, Dr. Lin. Uh, I mean, uh, is there is there liquid salt combined with the solid as well? Actually, I cannot hear any sound right now. Okay, so here, here, and here, we have the hollow air sound, but not on this mm -hmm. side. So mostly the stomach and the right side. Mm -hmm. I hear more like there's air on this side. Okay, so actually you can hear the air sound, and then there's no liquid sound uh, accompanied with that, right? No, I don't hear any liquid sound. Not like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, can you also check uh, Diego's joint affected by the arthritis? About, uh, I mean, uh, any joint he just mentioned pain. Uh, can you check that? Okay. Is there any swelling or any uh, red color or any, I mean, no matter acute or chronic inflammation sign around the, the joints? Okay. So, on the joints, which finger hurts the most? This finger. Here, right here, right here, right here, mm -hmm. right here, on the left, uh, wrist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shoulder. Okay, so this is the joint that hurts the most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's painful when I turn his hand over. Okay. It's a little bit swollen, but it doesn't look so. Bad. So I have I have a quick question to, uh, for Diego. So in the past twenty years, uh, you got the uh, arthritis, right? In the past twenty years, uh, the joint affected by arthritis, uh, I mean the outlooking uh, uh are become more swelling than twenty years ago. I think uh, the swelling hasn't really increased for the last couple of years, but the mm -hmm. pain has increased. Okay, okay. So the, the pain, uh, the pain is more obviously than the swelling, right? Yes. Um. Sometimes the, it's, it looks like it's more s swollen than than it is because of the pain, but I think my fingers have kind of stationed on the on the swelling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, in addition to night time or uh, you you just keep the same posture for a long time, uh, uh, you feel hurt more, right? In addition to all of this condition, how about a raining day? Is the raining days make the symptoms become worse? The problem is we don't have rainy days in California. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> But you yeah. know, I, I was I took a trip to Florida yeah. last week to see my mother, and mm -hmm. I noticed that uh, it rains over there a lot, and it did really affect me a little more. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like um, there are many conditions can make the the pain or the symptom about arthritis become worse. First one, uh, maybe uh, night time. Okay. And the second one uh, is uh, maybe you just keep the same po uh, posture. You don't move for a long time. The mm -hmm. third one is uh, when the climate become uh, humid more, all of the condition makes the, the symptom become worse, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, in your experience, in the past 20 years experience, just, just like this, right? Yes, yes. Okay, got it. Um, Dr. Lin, his uh, joints on the hands all feel warm. Oh, okay. So about the temperature around your um, extremities, I mean the distal part of your extremities, fingers or your toes, when the climate, when the temperature become uh, uh, down, I mean the weather become cold, uh, if you, uh, do you feel your distal part of extremity become cold as well? Very, no. very quickly? My extremities, my fingers and feet are never cold. Always mm -hmm. hot. 
Actually, okay. my wife said I feel like a heater all the time. <laughs> I, I, I okay. think it might it have a, a hotter temperature almost always. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, uh, so um, before we um, end the first part, uh, I'd like to make sure, um, uh, Diego, uh, do you uh, always feel tired no matter uh, you did a lot of things or no, you just stay there? Um, I mean, maybe you just sit on your sofa, read some book in the daytime. Yeah. Okay, I mean, so actually you feel- almost you, all the time. Okay, so most of the time you feel tired, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, did you afraid of the the wind uh, blow on your body? Yeah. No. You, know, you don't like the wind. I do like the wind. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Okay, got it. So, okay, I think uh, I, I got uh, all the information I need. So the last part is pause taking. Okay, the last part is pause taking. The right turn is deep, wiry, forceful, and thick. There's not much resistance or the bounce it's not very high. The amplitude of the pulse is low. Sorry, Tina, the signal is interrupted. Can you say that again? Okay, so the right turn is mm -hmm. deep, thick, deep, wiry, thick. Okay. Mm -hmm. meaning it's tight. Okay. And not forceful. The, the, the guan is slippery. Mid level and forceful. Ci is more superficial. Kind of forceful. You're not supposed to feel the two position as much, but I feel this readily, you know, and mm -hmm. it feels a little bit slippery. Mm -hmm. At this hand, does it relax? Okay, the left turn. This is the heart. Mm, Dr. Lin, virtually no pulse here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah. very low. Yeah. Actually, the pulse like that just you know uh, can can present the question I just asked the Diego about the, the sleep, the dream, the memory and the focus. Yeah. Right. Okay, go go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. There's not much hard blood. But pretty much no pulse. Let's see. You mean chun? You mean chun, right? Chun, yes. Okay. Left chun. Mm-hmm. Left one the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's a, a little bit more than tun, but it's very deep and very fine, very weak. Am I going cuckoo for cuckoo balls, Donna? No. You feel that too? That's the. The two sides are significantly different. It almost feels like two patients. Yeah. The two mm -hmm. pulse, I can feel a little bit like a little, little thin, weak pulse. It's also very weak. Also, all three positions, I would say deep, weak, virtually non existent. But the mm -hmm. right side is definitely much more normal. Okay. Okay, so um, one more thing uh, I almost forget to tell Diego is about the, the uh, okay, I think you can sit up. Okay. Yeah.
Okay, thank you so much. Um, okay, now um, I would like to. I would like to. Sorry, everything okay? He was fixing his hair for the camera. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, so the the last thing I like to tell you uh, is about the temperature of the food you take. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. I good. can hear you. Okay. Um. Actually, in the TCM theory. We just like suggest patient avoid the low temperature thing, okay? Because the low temperature, this factor can hurt your stomach, your heart, and your, just like you know, your um, blood vessel. Because the low temperature thing, this factor can max your body tissue construction, mm -hmm. okay? So the blood, the blood circulation will be affected. And just like you know, every organ, every tissue, every tiny part of your body need blood circulation, right? We need we need uh, um, bring the nutrition from the blood or oxygen uh, into your cell or your tissue, mm -hmm. and take the garbage out, right? Mm -hmm. So everything, no matter food or drinking, everything low temperature can affect. All the natural uh, the, the physiological uh, pathway and the layer effect. Mm -hmm. So obviously, uh, you have the the heart related issue. You have the um, fibromyalgia. You have the arthritis. All the condition, all the symptom or disease like this, for us for TCM theory. The most important thing, in addition to uh, we do the, the treatment, we do the acupuncture or make a prescription for you, uh, in addition to all of this, but also patient need to pay attention by themselves, watch out the temperature, okay? Yeah, so I think uh, most of time, uh, maybe you are still lucky, um, your energy is still good. I mean, uh, just like you said, no matter summer or winter, you can make sure your body temperature, your low, uh, your uh, distal, uh, distal part of your extremity can keep warm. I think that's a good news for you, okay? But we cannot just waste your energy like this. You just no stop, always take a low temperature thing, okay? It's a very, very huge risk for you. Okay. Yeah, so I ask you, uh, uh, in addition to I do the, the prescription for you, or the acupuncturist, or the chiropractor, or a physical therapist help you to, to treat all the problem, uh, you need to do, you need to do something for yourself. The first one, the important thing, most important thing is increase the temperature of your food. Okay. Yeah. yeah that will, that will be good for you. I will do that. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for today, uh, your cooperation and the information you offer. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so we finished with the first section of today's class. Let's take a break for five minutes. Uh, five minutes or 10 minutes, Dr. Lin? Uh, maybe 10 to okay. 15, okay? I need to figure out about this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll come back at 10, 10, 15. What is it now? Uh, okay, uh, it's about um, maybe one ten. Ooh, okay, one fifteen. One fifteen. I'll be back. Okay, so that would be our ten twenty a.m. Pacific. Uh, okay. okay. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank you. We'll see you later. And we'll okay. Thank you. In, we'll talk about the case, the diagnosis, treatment strategy, herbs. Okay. Okay. Thank you again, Diego. Thank you. Okay.